water stone, oil stones, put oil on, water stones, put water on. All good? Nick, your turn? <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, oil stones, everybody probably has these, inherited them from, you know, grandfather, father, whatnot. Uh, these are all natural. They come from, you know, most of them are Arkansas stones. They can come from about anywhere. Uh, there's three grades here. Uh, this is the Washita stone. This is the, the softest out of all of them, the coarsest. This is going to be the primary, primary uh, shaping, removing nicks, anything like that out of your blade. Uh, this one is sitting at about 600 grit right here. Roughly, that's a Japanese grit. I'm going to say Japanese grit because these are done in Japanese, so you have a good comparison between the two. Uh, the next one is a soft Arkansas stone. Uh, this is going to be not as soft as this one, but still uh, for your primary sharpening, it's going up to about 1,000 to or, yeah 1,000 to 1,200 grit. And then this is the what they call the surgical black. Uh, this one is about 4,000 grit. This is a very hard stone. This is for your final polishing and honing of your blade. There. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to oil stones of where they're sitting. Okay. Water stones, these, this is actually what I use, this is what I have in my shop here. Uh, these are natural water stones, this is a 1000 grit. This is what I use for you know, removing any, any nicks and things like that. Uh, if I have to do heavy, heavy uh, removal of stock, I actually use 220 grit paper, wet dry paper. Uh, otherwise, this is my initial sharpening. And then I go to a 6000 grit, and then I go to, this is about a 12000 grit. This is about as sharp as you need. Um, 6,000 is pretty sharp. 8,000 would be a little sharper. I like that one. Now, anybody know why we use water or oil on the stones at all? It's a lubricant. Okay. What it does is, as you're sharpening, it, it removes the, the metal and gets it to go away from the stone, keeps it clean, um, and provides a lubrication so that you can move easier over the stone. Uh, Water stones, it also creates a little bit of a slurry with the stone material to help speed up sharpening. Okay. Uh, difference here, roughly the same price. This might be a little less expensive, not a whole lot. Uh, between these three stones and these three stones, about $5 difference to get the whole set there. Uh, the other big difference is that these are a lot harder than water stones. Okay. They're going to last a lot longer. Uh, they're going to keep their flat a lot longer. Okay, you still have to maintain flatness on these. Drawback there is that the pores in there build up metal, and you got to get that clean. It's going to be a while before it builds up, depending on how much you sharpen. But the, it creates a glazing on there, and you have to clean that out uh, by flattening it. Uh, many ways of flattening it: 220 grit wet paper on on a granite surface or a glass plate will maintain the flatness and clear that out. These, on the other hand, are a lot softer. Uh, we use water on these, of course, and it's a, it's a frangible surface, meaning it continuously sloughs off the top layer, renewing the stone and creating a clean surface to sharpen on. Uh, they're not going to last as long as these, but uh, for most of these, they're going to last you for a very, very long time. Those are really the main differences between them. Uh, I read up a lot on arguments. You know, there's a lot of arguing. What's better, oil or water? It's up to you. I like water stones because they do have a continually renewing surface on there. You're using water, which is easier to clean up than oil. Uh, there's a lot of people actually using brand new oil stones with water instead of oil to sharpen, and it works just fine. If you have an old oil stone, it won't work with water. Uh, people have had some success boiling them to get the oil out of them and then using water afterwards. That's up to you. Uh, for arguments whether which one provides a more polished surface, well, this one goes up to 4,000 grit, this one 12,000 grit. You know, I mean, if you want to do a combination of the two, you can. Uh, it, it really depends on what you want to do. Like I said, about the same uh, price on there at either direction. Um, there's a couple things you have to know with them. Of course, you got to maintain their flatness. There's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can use a diamond stone 
for maintaining flatness. If you do that, um, there, there are some uh, DMT, the Dia Sharp. These are very, very flat. Um, I would say just these ones, the extra coarse or uh, coarse would work really well. Uh, Shafton, he sells one. I want to say this guy's uh, nearly $300. This is a very, very nice flapping plate. Maintain all the flatness on there. Not 100% necessary. What I actually use is a piece of granite and 220 grit by dry paper. Okay. And instead of spending hours and hours down the road trying to flatten this out, I take about 10 seconds every time I use it to flatten. Uh, this is on my bench next to my sharpening stuff. My stone comes out of the water, rub it on there for about 10 seconds, I know it's flat, and I go to work. Now that also eliminates one other step. With water stones, you typically need to get a Nagura stone. And after it's flat, you would rub this on the top. Excuse me, it creates a slurry so that uh, it'll help speed up sharpening. I have one of these, I really don't use it anymore because I have this sitting next to my everything and it creates a slurry just from, from flattening it over the side and off I go for sure. Okay. Um, other stones Watch you can get into, again, diamond stones, you don't have to maintain the flatness on these and they will hold their, their grit for a long time. They will eventually wear out, but uh, they do cost quite a bit more to get into. Uh, there's ceramics, which are a synthetic water stone. They don't need to be soaked in water, but they need to be wet while you're using them. And then Harlan was kind enough to bring in his shaft in glass stones. I promise I won't drop them. Uh, these are a hybrid uh, ceramic water stone uh, made in Japan. These are very, very flat. Got a glass plate on the back to help maintain their flatness. You still have to flatten them as you use them, but uh, very hard, more, more hard than these are, uh, so they're going to last a lot longer as well. Okay. Questions so far? No? Okay. Um, from there, there's a couple of jigs that you'd want to get. I like to use jigs. Uh, I kind of do a modified Rob Cosman style of sharpening. He does it all freehand. I like using jigs because it helps me keep uh, the same angle every time. Uh, this is as simple as it gets. This will work. Okay. Uh, has a narrow roller, which is not too bad unless you're doing real narrow chisels and it has a tendency to kind of want to wobble a little bit, so you got to be careful on that. This is actually the one I have. This is the Veritas Mark II from, well, for Veritas, you get through, through us. Uh, it's about 70 bucks. It is quite a bit bigger of a jig. It has a wider roller on here so that uh, more stable. Okay, And it also has a setup fence. This one here, you would put your uh, iron or chisel in there, protrude it out, and kind of eyeball to see if the uh, the bevel is sitting flat and then tighten it down. This one here, I can get the same bevel every single time. Um, the setup fence here, see, he's got it on 25. If you can see the color coding on there, you can't read it, but that corresponds with the fence here and this piece here. So number two, or the yellow is standard angle stuff. Uh, we'll do, I got a chisel here. Uh, 25 degrees should be. Looks like it's about a half inch. There is a little pointer on this fence, and there is graduation marks on here for the size of your plane or chisel. So that goes on, and on the side here, there is a fence and a stop. So I know that this chisel is going to sit square to the base, and that the stop is going to make it protrude exactly where it needs to be. So loosen this up. Bevel down here. A little looser here. Just like that. Tighten it down. Now, this is meant to be kind of wedged in there so you get one side kind of snug and then wedge down the other side. It'll hold it nice and tight. Hold it in. Slide off the fence and you're set. Now, the only other thing is here on the side is that this wheel is on an eccentric bearing. You want to make sure that the arrow is pointing up, or the little notch is pointing up, and that gives you a 25 degree angle. Um, 
And then you can do a micro bevel just by flipping that 180 down. Okay, and that'll give you a micro bevel on there. Uh, we'll do a little sharpening here. Just out of the way. about diamonds, you just have to get them wet. <laughs> and this, more or less toning this one. I'm still going to hold it. There's a little notch on the back to put my thumbs in. I'm still holding pressure down on here. Just a few licks. Keeping that wet. And this takes even fewer. Okay, that that's your first part is setting the bevel, and then you actually create a burr on there. It's going to go back on your extra fine, and you're set. Deb, you're waiting on knife sharpening. Uh, let's see your knife here. This is a, a special circumstance of cutting leather, right? Uh, really no jigs to do this with. Uh, Rob Cosman makes this little guide here. It's not necessarily gonna work with this because of the angle this is at, but this is kind of what I would suggest to make to figure out the angle you want, some rare earth magnets in there, and it would go down underneath and help hold the angle while you're sharpening it. Um, and there's no reason, the only problem is that you have to be able to swing that. Some, some show working the entire blade once. Normally what we do is work it. Do it by hand. Yeah. Just work half the blade one way, half the blade the other sure. way, and then flip and do the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to keep a exact angle on. No doubt. 